This is the Thursday, July 10th, 2014 meeting of the Zoning Board of Examiners and Appeals. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Vig? Here. Mr. Cars? Here. Mr. Ron? Here. Ms. Eicher? Mr. Hart? Ms. Dole? Here. Ms. McKay? Here. Thank you. We have before us the minutes from the June 12, 2014 um, zoning board meeting. Are there any uh, comments on the minutes before us this evening? Ms. Dole? In the write up of uh, my comments, uh, I just wanted to clarify, add uh, one or two words of clarification. Um, kind of in the middle of the paragraph, there's a reference to the inconsistency in statements, and I wanted to clarify that it was the financial statements, not uh, statements during the public testimony. So just adding the word financial would uh, make that clearer and uh, more accurate. Could, could you um, describe where that is again? Are, um, we on, are we on page seven of the minutes? Yes, page seven, where it, the paragraph that starts board member Dole, and it's about 11, li 11 lines down. Um, the on the left it says financially viable and she was troubled by the inconsistency in statements and I would request that the word words in the financial statements or it relating to the financial statements for clarification Okay, the minutes will be adjusted. Are there any other comments? I, any other? Yeah. Um, could we have a um, motion to approve the minutes as amended by Ms. Dole? If there are no other comments. Uh, Mr. Vig? Yes. You've indicated I make that motion and mr. Ron you've indicated you would second that yes mr. chair are there any other comments on the minutes if not um, could we vote or if there's no objection the minutes are approved as amended then next item on the agenda special order of business um, disclosures do we have any disclosures this evening Mr. Vig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In uh, in the previous meeting, I was uh, I made a disclosure that I was not present at the April 10th meeting and would not be able to participate in a vote on Resolution 2014-006. And uh, because of the, the lack of a quorum on that resolution, it was postponed. And since then, I've listened to the transcript or the audio of the proceedings and I'm prepared to uh, to vote uh, on that resolution at this meeting thank you mr. Vig. Uh, I, I would like to disclose that um, with respect to resolution 2014-008 case which was case 2014-058 I was uh, absent at that meeting uh, however if I were would have been at the media I would have abstained from that uh, hearing that case uh, due to a conflict of interest. So um, this evening we, we do not have a quorum um, since I will be unable to vote on that. So that uh, resolution will have to be postponed till the following meeting. So um, we will just um, be able to approve um, resolution 2014-006. Has everyone had a chance to read the resolution? Um, 
And are there any comments? If not, could I have a motion for approval? Yes, Ms. Dahl. I move to approve resolution 2014-006. Anything more? No. And Ms. McKay, you have a second? Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any objection to approval of the consent agenda item? Seeing none, that motion passes. We have uh, no other consent agenda items. Um, moving along on our agenda, appearance requests, unfinished business, and regular agenda, we have no items um, before us. That brings us to our public hearings. And um, what I would like to do is read the uh, order of um, the order for our, our public hearings and then also discuss a, uh, the situation that we have this evening which is a short board and go over that with the petitioner as well. Um, the, uh, the order of business for variance hearings um, states the chair shall introduce the variance and explain the procedure to be followed. The variance case number and the name of the applicant shall be read into the record. The board shall hear and rule on any objections to the sufficiency of notice. The board shall hear a brief staff presentation outlining the variance, not to exceed 10 minutes. On conclusion of the staff presentation, the board members and the applicant may then direct questions to the staff through the chair. The applicant shall give his or her presentation, not exceeding 10 minutes. Throughout the proceedings, the burden of proof rests upon the applicant who must convince the board by a preponderance of the evidence that the variance should be granted. On conclusion of the applicant's presentation, the board members and the staff may then direct questions to the applicant through the chair. The hearing shall then be open for public testimony. Each person has three minutes. Representatives of groups have five minutes. All persons who testify may be questioned by the board, staff, or the applicant. On conclusion of the public testimony, the staff followed by the applicant shall have the right of rebuttal. The board shall proceed to develop oral findings and conclusions with regard to the variance and disposition of the variance. The staff shall reduce the oral findings and conclusions to writing for subsequent ad adoption by the board at a later meeting. The matter then rests with the board and the chair asks for a positive motion from the board. The, uh, in order for a variance to be granted, there needs to be a majority of the fully constituted board that vote in favor of, of a given variance. We have uh, a fully constituted board is made up of nine members. We have five members here this evening. So we're in what's called a short board situation. Um, and that means that in order for a variance to be granted, all five of the, um, the board members must vote in favor of that variance. So um, I state that so that when I read the policy on postponement, um, the applicant can make a decision as to whether or not they want to proceed this evening. Okay, I, and I apologize because as I said, I wasn't at the last meeting, but the, um, I will read that it has been postponed one time and, and um, we are now going to hear the, the case this evening. Uh, again, I apologize for that misstatement. Um, so the, when there is a short five member board or commission and a postponement is, is offered to and agreed to by the petitioner, they will be moved to the next regular agenda. This should occur within 30 days, which does not require re-noticing the case, which would include new public hearings, hearing notices and advertising. If the petitioner is willing to postpone but unable to attend the next available meeting date within 30 days, the petitioner has a one time only option to choose the next date certain he she can attend at no extra fee. When a postponement is requested by the petitioner, there is a rescheduling fee and a new public hearing date shall be determined by the planning division. This will put their case in the next available cutoff date queue as if they were submitting their case for the first time. So uh, again, because the postponement was offered at the last meeting, um, we will be proceeding this evening. Um, just for the record, it will require a vote of all five members in favor of the variance in order for it to be granted. So with that in mind, that brings us to our 
Uh, first case this evening, case 2014-067. The petitioner is Kenneth Higgins. Is petitioners, in, they've indicated they are present. Could staff provide us with the sufficiency of notice, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On May 22nd, uh, 56 public hearing notices were mailed. At the time this report was written, two responses had been received and uh, no community council uh, comments were received. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whitfield. Could you proceed with the staff presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a variance request from Anchorage Municipal Code 2140-080-G2, the R7 Intermediate Rural Residential District, to allow a deck to encroach into the required 10-foot side yard setback for a non-conforming lot of record, R6 Rural Residential Lot. Uh, the R7 setbacks are applied in accordance with AMC 2155-020A. The subject property is located within the R6 Suburban Residential uh, Zoning District. However, because the lot was platted prior to zoning, it is considered a legal non-conforming lot of record. Non-conforming lots of record must meet the minimum setback and lot coverage requirements of, zoning, of the zoning district, which is the largest lot area requirement within, within which the lot would be a conforming lot. Uh, and this is actually stated in Anchorage Municipal Code 2155020A. In this case, the subject property would be conforming in the R7 Intermediate Rural Residential District, with the setbacks uh, being as follows. Front yard, 25 feet. Side yard, 10 feet. Rear yard, 20 feet. The petitioner is seeking a variance to allow the existing uh, porch and deck to encroach uh, plus or minus 8 feet into the required 10-foot west side yard setback. In 2002, the petitioner obtained a building permit uh, to construct a 385-foot uh, square foot addition to his home. The porch and deck was not included in this plan on the permit application, and uh, the, the petitioner did not get a permit for that deck. Um, in order for a variance to be granted, there are seven standards that need to be met uh, for the granting of that variance, and I'll go through each each one of the standards separately. Standard number one, staff finds that this standard is substantially met. There does exist an exceptional and extraordinary physical circumstance in this case. The topography of the property slopes downward to the north. This topography appears to limit where a structure um, such as the deck may be reasonably placed. Uh, standard number two, staff finds that this standard is substantially met. As was stated in condition one, it appears that topography of the property limits where a structure could be placed. Uh, there is an ex expectation uh, that a property owner has the right to exit, exit the back door of, of, of his uh, structure or of his principal structure, his home, in the safest manner possible. Standard number three, uh, staff finds that this standard is not substantially met. Uh, the petitioner in this case unfortunately failed in doing his due diligence. Um, a porch and, and deck of this size requires a building permit, and had the petitioner made application for that permit, the encroachment would have been identified by municipal staff. The need for this variance was not beyond the control of the petitioner, and the hardship appears to be self-imposed. Standard number four, uh, staff finds that this standard is substantially met. The neighboring property owners to the west have submitted a letter of support to petitioner's request for this zoning variance. They've stated that the, quote, the Higgins' efforts regarding their house and lot have always added value to our neighborhood, end quote, and that Mr. Higgins keeps his neighbors in mind when either adding on to his home or adding other improvements. Standard number five, staff finds that this standard is substantially met. The granting of this variance is in keeping with the intent of the code and will not change the character of the zoning district. The use of the property will remain residential. The neighbors have stated that, that, they, uh, that the setting of the properties is natural and not crowded and that they, they do not feel that they are infringed upon. Standard number six, staff finds this standard to be substantially met. The granting of this variance will not affect the health, safety, or welfare of the people of the municipality of Anchorage. Uh, the variance does not alter fire department safety standards. Uh, 
uh, traffic clear vision areas or Department of Health and Human Services uh, standards. It is a dimensional variance that actually provides safe access around the backside of uh, the petitioner's house. Standard number seven, staff finds that this standard is not substantially met. It is reasonable and common of most single family dwellings to have a porch or, or deck accessing the rear of their property. However, a wraparound deck of this size that encroaches uh, eight feet into the required side yard setback is not the minimum variance possible to make a reasonable use of the land. It is reasonable to assume that a smaller deck or porch could be constructed that minimizes or eliminates altogether the encroachment. So with that being said, uh, uh, staff has to uh, recommend denial of this variance as all seven standards have not been met. However, if the board determines that all standards have in fact been met, staff would recommend that the approval be subject to two conditions listed on pages on page six of your staff packet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Whitfield. Are there any questions of staff by the board? Uh, Ms. Dole. Um, through the chair, I, with regard to finding number three, sorry, with regard to finding number three, when you uh, asked, when you made the statement about a porch deck of this size requires a building permit, um, did, you, did you look at the 2004 uh, code when you made that or not? Uh, through the chair, Ms. Ms. Dole, that, yes, I did do that, and, and at that particular time, the, the code would have required a permit as well. Um, yeah, so it, regardless of when the, the deck was constructed, it would have required a permit, certainly. Thank you. Mr. Vig. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, along those lines, Mr. Whitfield, then, um, would it be appropriate to add a third condition if should we approve this to require the applicant to submit for and receive a, a review of the of the structure, at least on, from a structural standpoint, to ensure its adequacy in that regard? Uh, through the chair, Mr. Vig, I, I believe the petitioner is actually working uh, with the building safety department to obtain a permit. And in, in fact, that is why he's here tonight, because he was trying to, uh, to get a permit for another structure on his property and this encroachment was caught at that time so he will be obtaining a, a permit for the uh, for the deck if in fact this is uh, this is approved thank you uh, miss dole do you have another question I, I do through the chair uh, I just want to be certain uh, I understand I, I guess I would I was looking at page seven of the staff packet that and it's uh, looks like an as built that shows the two story house and the porch and decks inside the set 10 foot setback. But on the bottom left hand corner, there's another structure labeled deck and sheds. And I just wanted to ask for clarification as to those other structures that are not uh, tat not immediately adjacent or attached to the two-story house uh, through the chair miss Dole I'd be happy to talk to you about uh, those accessory structures uh, the code allows for accessory structures not exceeding a, a certain square footage uh, to be in a, a side or rear yard setback and uh, and these structures don't exceed that maximum so they're allowed to be in a required, like I said, in a required side or rear yard setback. The issue with those structures is that they're in uh, a utility easement. And if you, uh, if I could just direct your attention to page six, um, condition number one is that the petitioner uh, obtain letters of non-objection from all utilities that have interest in that utility easement to allow that structure uh, to remain. But in terms of a zoning um, requirement, they are 100% legal and they can be located in that setback. The issue with the porch and deck is that it's attached to the principal structure 
and because of that, it is part of the principal structure and cannot encroach into the setback. That's the real issue. Does that clarify a little bit for you? Yes, it does. Okay, Thank very you. good. Oh. Are there other questions uh, by any of the board members? Uh, yes, Mr. Ron. Thank you, through the chair. Mr. Whitfield, what would the um, side yard setback for the R6 zoning district be? Uh, through the chair, uh, Mr. Ron, the R6 setbacks are the most restrictive setbacks we have in residential districts in Anchorage. And um, the side yard setback in the R6 is 25 feet. Uh, the front yard setback is 50 feet, and the rear would be 50. Um, so, you know, this is a relatively small lot when considering it being zoned R6. Because of that, uh, we apply the, the smaller setbacks, and, and that's why we come up with a 10-foot side yard setback. Uh, Follow-up question, Mr. Whitfield, would the uh, neighboring lots be subject to the same application of the R7 setbacks? Uh, it, the, yes, the, absolutely. The neighboring properties, in fact, the entire area appear to be um, all legal non-conforming lots of record, and they would probably be, be conforming in the R7 and, and be applied the same variant, or the, I'm sorry, the same setbacks as we have on this property. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff by the board? Seeing none, could the uh, applicant come forward, please? Could you uh, state and spell your name for the record? Yes, uh, Kenneth Higgins, K-E-N-N-E-T-H-H-I-G-G-I-N-S. Th thank you, Mr. Higgins. Uh, as I mentioned earlier you have 10 minutes from your from your presentation and we must find that all seven standards are met in order to grant a variance so if you'll as part of your presentation make sure you address all of the standards i will uh good evening i'm the co-owner with my wife cindy of the residential property at 13385 ridgewood circle that is subject to this variance request thank you for taking time tonight to hear our request uh, short history may be a little redundant. In 2002, we took out a building permit to construct a bedroom addition on the rear of our house. I was the sole builder and completed the construction over the course of a year, working on weekends and evenings. In the summer of 2004, I constructed the adjacent decks porches that are the subject of this request in order to provide access from our back door to the bulk of our backyard. <clears throat> if you see by the as built, our house is the original house is crammed in the far back corner of the house of the lot rather. Um, the porches are structurally separate from each other and each is under 200 square feet so at that time I believed that I did not need a, a building permit. Turned out to be false but that's what I believe. This past fall I built a shed in my front side yard that generated a complaint and in the course of resolving that issue with the Muni I submitted an updated as built. The zoning department review of the new as-built identified both decks as being in violation of side yard setback requirements. Believing that the current configuration is the safest and most logical solution to our egress and access situation, having invested a great deal of money in the decks and as a longtime professional cabinet maker, a lot of meticulous work to create an attack, attractive curvilinear deck, my wife and I decided to request this variance. Uh, the shed issue also led to the Muni informing me that the deck did indeed need a permit because of the height of its maximum elevation, if not because of its square footage. Because we still had an open building permit on the addition, the Muni agreed that we could pay a fee to allow it to now cover the decks as well. Structural inspections are awaiting the final decision of your board. Didn't see any reason to schedule inspections if we weren't going to keep the deck. My understanding of this process is that we don't need to go over questions uh, one, two, four, five, and six uh, on the variance application questionnaire because the related standards were determined by Muni planning staff to be substantially met. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Whitmer, the municipality's planning staff, for his balanced and fair assessment of our responses to those questions. In fact, everyone I've dealt with at the Muni regarding the shed and the decks has been very friendly, helpful, and professional, and I really want to acknowledge that because I was nervous about the whole thing. So that leaves questions three and seven to be addressed. And I'd like to start with question seven. All we can do is reiterate to the board that we feel that a partial variance 
requiring the removal of a portion of each deck to minimize the footprint and the setback is problematic because of a fairly serious safety concern. The long, narrow deck, which we consider the back porch, runs parallel to the eave beneath the metal roof, meaning that large quantities of accumulated snow suddenly and unpredictably shed onto the deck every year. Here's a photo showing the impressive amounts that can literally be hanging over a porch user's head. Bear in mind that the snow doesn't fall straight down. It often slides from upper portions of the roof with a major outward trajectory. So we reiterate our contention that in the winter, the entire inner half of the porch is unsafe for walking. Uh, I'd also like to point out that the two decks porches are curved where they meet, and that already minimizes their intrusion into the setback significantly. It's, a, it's as, about as minimal as they can be and still intersect. Finally, though it's really only our problem, not the munis, the beam supporting the longer deck is located at the outermost edge, meaning that any narrowing of the deck would require a complete demolition and complete rebuild. <clears throat> Excuse me. Question three is the hardest one for me to address. I really wish I could say that this hardship was not self-imposed. Unfortunately, as a guy who thought he could do everything himself, I have no one to blame but myself. My mistakes were many, and honestly, they're quite embarrassing. For example, I recently learned that I neglected to show any details of the existing structure when I submitted the plans for the addition, concentrating on the addition. I just didn't even pay attention to the other parts, meaning I did not identify the existing back door, only the door opening I'd framed for passage into the new addition. So plan review couldn't have noted and warned me of any potential egress problem. I really did review the code both before starting the addition and again before starting the deck, and I felt that I was accurately and responsibly interpreting it. In my reading, I sincerely believe that the code stipulated that decks, porches, and eaves were not a consideration in setbacks. Only after revisiting the code during the shed issue did I realize that the language very specifically pertained to lot coverage and had nothing to do with setbacks. I didn't even know what lot coverage was. So. I have to tell you, that was a gut-wrenching realization to know that I was that severely in, in uh, violation. I now know, <clears throat> excuse me, I now know that while I may be a very good builder, I'm a very bad surveyor, draftsman, and code interpreter. I'm not an anti-permit person. We don't want any re unresolved issues hanging over our property. This basically means that my only recourse here is to ask the board for mercy on a well-intentioned owner builder who was in over his head without realizing it. To summarize, my neighbors have gone on record as opposing the removal of the deck, and the odd layout of our lots means that we are not visually crowded by the setback intrusion. The weird conglomeration of various height walkway surfaces, retaining walls, and multiple step structures, some up, some down, that I'd have to replace the porch and deck with in order to be strictly compliant would be far less attractive on our neighbor's view shed than the current structures. See the photo at the top of attachment three of our application for a shot taken, a view taken from their deck, of our deck. <clears throat> More importantly, as a retired professional workers' compensation and risk manager, I can say with absolute certainty that every additional step and walking level significantly increases the risk of falls and injuries, and especially so when they are situated in an outdoor winter environment. Uh, to meet the standard with another structure, I would have to come down 10 steps, several feet over, come up six or eight steps, another walkway, come around the bend, and it, it would be something like 15 more steps. Um, I know that enforcing compliance is important, but I'm asking you very humbly to put logic and safety above compliance for compliance sake in this instance, and to recognize that the current configuration is the safest and most optimum one available, and to grant us this variance. Believe me, I will never turn a shovel again without thoroughly checking with the Muni. Thank you for your time and for this opportunity to state my case. And now my wife, Cindy, would like to take the last minute or so to make a very brief statement. Thank you. Thank you, and you have two, two minutes and 50 se seconds left. I'll talk slow and stretch it out. Hi, my name is Cindy Higgins. It's H-I-G-G-I-N-S. And um, Ken and I live in the house with the structure that we're referring to. And I would just add uh, that Ken and I are longtime Anchorage residents, and we love our community. We plan to stay here. We want to age in our home, um, and we've prepared our home uh, to do so safely and comfortably. Changes to our back deck that would require more stairs or stairs that are steeper or more narrow uh, would be less safe and less functional and certainly less um, aesthetic. 18 years ago, we bought 
this rather rundown house built in the 70s, and over time we've transformed it into a house that we're very proud of. Um, it's energy efficient, and we believe it's an asset to our neighborhood community. I ask you to please consider the input from our bordering neighbor who has no objection to our structure and in fact use it as an asset to both of our properties. I know that anything we might be able to build in its place will be less pleasing. I also understand that other Ridgewood neighbors have submitted input in support of the existing structure and that there are no objections. So we throw ourselves really um, at the mercy of the board in hopes that you conclude that the benefits to our neighborhood community by approving this variance exceed the impacts of denying it. Thank you. Uh, one last thing. I also uh, have gotten the letters of non-objection. The only outstanding uh, left is uh, Two Gats Electric, and they were, I paid them for an intrusion, and we need to register that. So that's the only hanging in on, on the small shed that you mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any questions of the applicant by the, any of the board members? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, Mr. Rowan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple of questions, Mr. Ms. Higgins. Uh, thank you for coming tonight and for your presentation. Um, and Mr. Higgins, I appreciate that you um, didn't waste any time and you got right to the standards of, of, of question. Um, that said, I, I would like to hearken back to uh, standards one and two and asking a question about standard three. And I appreciate um, the admission you've made regarding hardship. And uh, that said, I think I have a, a slight difference of interpretation regarding that hardship. And I'd like to learn more from you um, about the uh, special conditions of the lot, the topography, if you could speak to that a little bit more. Certainly. Um, we're the only road in Anchorage that's built, uh, our road is a P, a backwards, backwards, upside down P. And the center of the P and the center of it is a hill, and all the lots radiate out from that crest of that hill. So we're on the south, the north side of that hill. Our neighbors are on the west side. Their rear lot line faces our side lot line. Because there, it's, the whole thing slopes up and around the house to the hill and the, behind our house, um, essentially the back door opens out at 70 inches above ground, and shortly thereafter the, the ground slopes sharply up and around the house. So it's not just sloping up, the slope continues around the back of the house. So the current deck basically gives us four total steps to go from our backyard down to the ground, from, from our back door down to the backyard. And there is almost no, as you see by the plot, the as-built, there's almost no backyard to the side of the house. All of the bulk of it is, is to the east. So in order, that's, that's what I was referring to when I said it would take many more steps to come down, go across, come up. It's because of that configuration. Uh, it's up and around, and that's the complication. And a follow-up question for clarification. Um, I, I'm trying to get straight in my mind, back door, side deck. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the rear egress that you're talking about, the 70-inch disparity, is that, does that enter onto the curvilinear deck that we're looking at in the southwesternmost corner? It enters into the long, narrow one that ends in a curve. Yeah, the longest one. And then the other one's a half circle that kind of in intersects it. Thank you. Are there any other questions of the board? I, I do have one question. The, uh, the, your, the, the doorway that's indicated on page seven, the ASBEL, is that, was that also the existing, or was that the, um, the old location for the door, the rear door, or did that get relocated? Yes, even though I neglected to put it on the plan. I just wasn't thinking in terms of showing details on the thing. That was a major oversight. Okay. Um, I, I misspoke. I had two questions. You would said that it was a, a, an upside-down P. Yes. You're sure it's not just a small B? Yeah, I guess it. Okay. Just... <laughs> I don't know why I look at it the other way, but yes, you're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions by the, um, any of the board? Yes, Mr. Ron. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Ms. Higgins, uh, staff had indicated that you may be going through a process to obtain a building permit for the mm -hmm. deck. Could you, for the record, uh, make statements to that I, I, regarding I that? I meant it, and I was reading fast to get through my time. But, um, yeah, as it turned out, when all this came on, the deck, the, the shed issue opened all this can of worms. 
which is, by the way, all resolved. I'm in compliance with the shed. Um, however, one of the things that brought out is I never completely closed out the original 2002 building permit. All the inspections were done, but I never submitted the new as built. And uh, consequently, that was still an open permit. So I paid a fee to keep it open, and the, the safety staff, the inspection staff said, you can put the deck on it, and as soon as the board determines if you can keep the deck or not, you can set up an inspect. It'll be inspected and cleared under a building permit, the same one that was for the addition. Thank you. And the, uh, by the way, I've already submitted drawings of it, so the engineers have already reviewed it. Are there any other questions? Yes, Ms. Dole. Um, I, I do have a question. Uh, are the only doors that one door that goes, the entry door that's marked on, um, on the as built on page seven, and I was actually looking at page 21, which is, looks like the same thing. And then that other door <clears throat> that we call the rear door that's actually looks like it's on the side of the that goes out to that long porch or are there other doors mm -hmm. no and, those are the only two doors and is there anything that would make it is there any reason you couldn't add another door on um, on the other side of the house that looks out on the other side yard or rear yard whichever mm. in other words um, I guess the east, if this is oriented north, yeah. south. Um, well, there's large family room there, so in all honesty, yes, that's probably possible. Um, not from um, the master bedroom would be kind of odd to build, to go directly into the backyard would have to come out of the master bedroom, and that would be slightly odd. <laughs> but there is a family room that you could yes. say build it back yeah, on. To be honest, there yes, any, there is. Is there any? Thing about the topography or anything on that that side of the house that would make it um, either desirable or undesirable one way or the other uh, can you speak to that is that that sloping it, still sloping yeah. area or um, it's still sloping area there I mean there would still have to be steps in different levels uh, it's a slightly uh, different slope but it is, it is still in fact there's a on that side of the house there's a path that goes up through the woods to the backyard but it's quite steep and we don't even clear it in the winter time um, and it's 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 true that we're looking at these mainly as as porches for egress the small shed is a little sauna that I use pretty frequently in the winter time um, but we also use it as a deck and there's no sunshine or view on the other side period <laughs> so thank you I, I don't have any other questions thank you um, are there any other questions does staff have any questions of the applicant no mr. chairman okay um, thank you with that uh, we will open the uh, hearing up for public testimony thank, thank you thank you is there Anyone from the public wishing to testify? If so, could you please come forward? If you could uh, state and spell your name for the record. Yes, I'm Anita Williams, A-N-I-T-A-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Thank you, Ms. Williams. You have three minutes. Okay. Um, I um, have the house to the west of the Higginses, and um, I just want to say that as neighbors, uh, Ken and Cindy are extremely considerate in any of the activities that they do. Um, and he's quite the craftsman. And truly, his deck has made uh, positive influence in that backyard area. It's uh, sort of a wilderness back there. So it's a, it's a very pleasant uh, and well-built structure. Um, I would just hope that uh, you could maybe be a little lenient in, in an owner builder uh, trying to do a project like this. And he's probably not as familiar with all the, the codes and regulations. Um, and perhaps, you know, a little more guidance would have helped. But, you know, we all make mistakes. But um, from my perspective, he has. Uh, 
uh, increased uh, the beauty and value of our neighborhood. And I, from my perspective, I support uh, offering him the, the variance if that's possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Are there any questions of board? Thank you. Oh, did I miss? Ms. Sorry, uh, Ms. Williams, uh, I apologize for being slow on the draw, but Mr. Vig did have a, a question for you. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, can I, uh, could, could you confirm that there's the, I think we saw reference to about a 50 foot d distance between your residence and the decks that we're talking about. Does that sound about right? Um, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look like there's a fence or anything that would indicate the property line being where it is between your properties. There's no, there there's, fences? there's nothing there. There's just uh, so there's bushes. no visual indication that this is encroaching in. No, in, none whatsoever. Okay, yeah. thank you. Are there? Oh, Ms. Williams, I'm sorry. If we've got uh, Mr. Ron, you had a question. I'll uh, try and be quicker before you. Just turn before the down. buzzer, um, Ms. Williams, I'm looking at the uh, aerial photography uh, in the staff packet on page 23, and you mentioned it being a bit of a wilderness back there. Um, I'm having difficulty telling are, are, are there deciduous trees or coniferous trees uh, during the winter time? What's the visibility like? Is, is there still? Um, actually, we have a, a lot of uh, bushes between there with a few large uh, spruce and some large birch and then alders on the on the far end. Um, there, there are some visual blocks, but in you know, um, I can see their deck and, and they can see mine. So, and his deck looks better than my deck. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Williams. Is there anyone else from the public that wishes to testify this evening? Anyone at all? Uh, seeing no one, the public hearing is closed. Uh, does staff have any rebuttal? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does the applicant have any rebuttal comments they wish to make? Is, for the record, they've indicated they do not. Um, with that, the ma matter rests with the board. Um, if I could have a positive motion from the board member, please, for us to act discuss and act on. Mr. Ron, you've indicated to make the motion? That's correct, Mr. Chair. In uh, case 2014-067, I move that the uh, board grant a variance from AMC 21.40.080G.2 and the R7 Intermediate Rural Residential District to allow a deck to encroach into the requir required 10-foot side yard setback for a non-conforming lot of record in the R6 Rural Residential District. R7 setbacks are applied in accordance with AMC 21.55.020A uh, in consideration of Department Recommendations 1 and 2 um, on page 6 of the staff packet. Thank you, Mr. Ron. Mr. Vig, you've indicated you'd second that motion? I do. Thank you, Mr. Vig. Uh, Mr. Ron, would you speak to your motion, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I concur with uh, staff's findings regarding standards 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, if I'm doing my math right, that means I need to speak to standards 3 and 7. Um, regarding standard 3, um, uh, I, I do believe that the hardship that 
um, is of most import to me, um, stretching from or carrying forward from standards one and two relate to the conditions of the lot and the way that the topography has uh, affected placement of the original house um, and also comes into play regarding the uh, separation between um, height at elevation for uh, the egress and, and the ground. Um, I do um, believe that based on those natural circumstances, physical circumstances of the lot, um, that the hardship uh, is not self-imposed. Uh, I do believe that creates special conditions. Uh, those special conditions um, in terms of topography and, and house placement and the way that the, the deck as designed enables uh, uh, safer egress um, and uh, uh, transportation or rather movement around, around the lot. Um, I, I don't believe that those things are directly tied to the results of, or actions of the applicant. Um, therefore, I, I, I find that uh, standard three is, um, is met. Regarding standard number seven, um, variance granted is the minimum variance that will make a possible reasonable use of the land. Um, carrying forward from um, staff's comments that it is reasonable and common for most single family dwellings to have a porch and, and deck uh, on the rear of the property. Um, I, I find that the size of the deck in, in comparison to the, the footprint of the house uh, appears reasonable. Um, it, uh, uh, the need for the variance is, is clearly um, uh, established because of the placement of the house on, on the lot and the fact that it is close to, uh, to that side yard setback. I, I don't find that the need for the variance is driven by uh, an egregiously large deck. Um, furthermore, um, with respect to wraparound porch and deck, um, uh, it's important to me to, uh, when possible, look at the safety aspects associated with uh, something like a, a deck. And um, the rear portions of this deck allowing um, uh, egress from that, that rear bedroom, I think, uh, are, are worth evaluating in terms of whether or not this is a minim minimum variance that will uh, make possible reasonable uh, use of the land. Um, so with those statements, um, I, I uh, currently intend to, to support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Ron. Mr. Vig, would you speak to your speak to the motion, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I too, will confine my comments to standards three and seven, um, having agreed with staff's findings on the, on the remaining standards. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I agree with Mr. Ron's analysis with regard to standard number three in that and that the applicant um, was dealing with some special conditions and circumstances that were present as a result of topography and placement of the house originally. Um, and so uh, I do believe there's a case to be made for, for that standard to be met uh, on those special conditions. And also with regard to, <coughs> excuse me, standard number seven, and this is something we've, as a board, dealt with in, in uh, previous cases over the years where we have uh, safety concerns and, and egress needs. Um, Mr. Ron spoke to those, and I agree that that's an important aspect of this. And uh, the, the applicant's testimony about uh, minimizing the the encroachment would would add steps up and down to to get around the uh, side of the house uh, it does affect the, the safety and, and uh, egress uh, provisions of the of the structure and so uh, while it it uh, is a greater greater encroachment than could otherwise perhaps be done. It's, I think, the, the minimus, the minimus encroachment, while meeting the, the applicable safety and and uh, uh, I'd just just say applicable safety concerns that I would have. So, um, I agree that that standard. Agree with Mr. Ron that that standard is met, and uh, I intend to support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Vig, Ms. Dole. Thank you. I also intend to support the motion. 
Uh, with regard to number three, um, it sounds to me that given the physical factors of the slope, that if the petitioner had gone, uh, had properly done everything uh, when he built it and gone for the building permit, and it had been identified as an encroachment that uh, because of the slope and because of the alternatives that would have required the additional stairs, that it, there might still have been the need for the variance at that time based on the physical conditions um, and the, the sl given the slope and the stairs. Uh, with regard to number seven and web as to whether this is the minimum variance necessary, um, it, given where the supporting pole is and the unique, um, I guess, what uniqueness of what's there, um, I, it, I believe this is the minimum variance that will make possible a reasonable use of the land. And I concur with the staff on the other factors. Thank you, Ms. Dole. Ms. McKay? I too am going to uh, support the motion. Um, I concur with uh, Mr. Big and Mr. Ron and Ms. Dole on um, everything that they've said. I think that this case does come down to, as the staff put it, the expectation that a property owner has the right to exit the back door in the safest manner possible. And I think that this deck provides that safety for the, for the owner. Thank you, Ms. McKay. Are there any other comments by any board members? Seeing none, please vote. That motion passes by a vote of five to zero. Uh, for the record, uh, I must read, every final decision of the board shall clearly state on its face, it is a final decision with respect to all issues involved in the case and that the parties have 30 days from the date of mailing or other distribution of the decision to file an appeal to the Superior Court. With that, that is our um, one and only case this evening. Um, so uh, I think we'll quickly be able to wrap things up on our end. Um, I don't know that I have any reports. Are there any reports from staff? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, no reports. And do you have an indication on the uh, number of cases for next month? Uh, unfortunately, I did not check the number of cases uh, for next month. I apologize. Okay. Uh, any board members know of their uh, absence or presence at next month's meeting? All right. Well. Hope we see everybody there. Um, any other comments from any of the board members? If not, uh, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ms. McKay. Anyone wish to second? Ms. Dole. All right, any objection to our adjournment? If not, we're adjourned.